probably realize that I am not um, coming to you live from either my home office or from my living room where you've seen me. Like many of my colleagues um, at our headquarter campus at UC Santa Cruz, um, I've been evacuated and am coming live to you from one of my friends, dear friends, garages here in Mountain View where um, we are safe um, and in good spirits, um, but just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that the fire that we're going to talk about today is not the only one impacting the Bay Area and impacting our colleagues. Um, we won't address questions about the UC Santa Cruz campus today. Um, we recommend that you go to um, the website to get updates there, and I'll put that in the chat in a few moments after we get started. Um, today, we are going to specifically address, of course, the fire that swept over Mount Hamilton last week. Um, and then um, our director, Claire Max, um, will be answering questions in addition to our superintendent, Costas Kloros, who's been living and working on the mountain for the last 23 years and, and been our superintendent for most of that. Um, he's one of the few folks who were on the mountain for most of the time uh, throughout the weekend. Um, first, I'm going to begin by sharing a, a quick time-lapse video of, of the night that the fire swept over the mountain. So the big dome in the middle is the Shane three meter telescope. Many of us recognize the images from that video because we were following along um, with our, what we call the ham cams, our, our live webcams on the website. Um, we watched overnight trying to understand what was happening and quite honestly fearing the worst. Costas, uh, as I mentioned before, you were one of the folks who uh, were on the mountain for most of that time. Can you spend a few minutes walking us through the timeline of this fire, uh, which I understand uh, first began on Tuesday? Sure, um, I'll begin with, um, so the, uh, the, the, the fires actually started uh, right uh, on Sunday morning uh, when uh, we had that uh, all that lightning um, thunderstorm uh, sweeping through this uh, uh, area. So Sunday morning, as of Sunday morning, there were multiple strikes uh, within a, a 10 mile, mile radius from the observatory. And uh, immediately on Monday and on Tuesday, there were uh, teams uh, uh, locally actually on site, uh, volunteer teams from CAL FIRE, uh, mining the fire lookout and just keeping an eye out there on the smoke uh, situation. So advising CAL FIRE on how the, the fire, the distant fires were progressing. Uh, by by Tuesday morning, then we did start seeing the, the north the fires from the north. Uh, there was a fire to the east of us, ten miles. There was a concern, but then the fires from the north, they were initially at ten miles away. They started to uh, increase in speed and we started approaching to, to the mountain. Uh, and we were keeping a close eye. They were about six miles away uh, from from. They were getting close and they were advancing. By that same night, um, Tuesday night, then we did receive uh, the order from CAL FIRE to evacuate. Uh, we evacuated uh, 
all of the uh, 30 residents uh, and staff from the observatory safely. And uh, uh, on the morning of, uh, uh, let's see, Wednesday the, the 19th, then let me start sharing uh, some images that I have so I can give you some idea of how, how, how things look. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes, okay. So then, uh, yeah, this is uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, the timestamp there is a standard time where, uh, so it's this is a one plus one hour for the time you see there. So a lot of resources started arriving. Those red tracks are from Cal Fire. Um, and um, there are multiple units. So uh, you'll see later on that there's some other resources. Uh, so those, see those green engines, those strike teams have started arriving as well. And setting up um, uh, the resources on site and um, uh, getting ready for that fire that it was by their models and the predictions that they knew it was going to hit Mount Hamilton around uh, noon time or so. Um, find a way to continue advancing here. So by Wednesday afternoon, uh, about uh, uh, three o'clock, it was when the fire did get really, really close to the mountain and started to uh, really hit the, uh, get really close, in fact, by 318, it was when the, the first structures were pretty much, uh, uh, the, the front of the fire was going through those structures. It, it, it came from the north side in an area called Tortilla Flats. And uh, it, uh, it did continue on to, unfortunately I cannot get my images to advance in here. Process, what if, hit the next, hit the X and, and see what happens. The X in the upper right. There's also a spot that says see all photos on the left. Yeah. On the upper left in the blue box. Let me show you that. Costas everyone is broadcasting live from Mount Hamilton right now. It's definitely not in his own office with his own equipment. Let's try this one. Okay. Does that look like it's advancing? Good. All right. So let's go through this. So then more resources arriving, they're prepping. Um, and this is just the, the base of the, uh, the main observatory by the maintenance shop. And basically what they're doing here, they're, they're staging and they're establishing their safety zone. So they have with Cal Fire, with all the resources, when there's huge fires like this, they have to establish a safety zone. Basically you have about 20 engines, about 60 or 70 personnel uh, getting ready to fight a fire. And they have to have a safety zone, make sure everybody's safe because this fire is going to sweep through, it's going to distract everything it's, uh, uh, while it's moving. And uh, you see them here just starting to uh, um, uh, get familiar with the site. Um, this is 910. And uh, here is now at about 3 p.m. We're looking north from, from the observatory at this area, which is called Tortilla Flats. Uh, four houses there, one of them is visible. It's getting very close there. There's, you can see the smoke is, uh, is about to get to be like this. So it starts to create those huge flames, 150, 200 feet high flames. So those are, those are Enormous, it's, a, it's an enormous flames that they're, that they're sweeping through. Uh, and they're going for those houses and for the, for the main observatory. Uh, you see the teams up here now, they're all staged in the, uh, uh, at the safety zone. This is the visitor center, the main building. And uh, they're just- It's still dead. It's so smoky. And it's very smoky because the fire is actually just uh, below us to the, to the west. And uh, so here it is, below us to the west, the fire is sweeping 
through and it goes on towards to the south of the observatory the regions called uh, around Snake Ridge where the Crowsley telescope is. And after the smoke clears a little bit, uh, they could see that one of the residences there, uh, one of the unused residences, is up in flames. Uh, this likely was the only one that uh, it, uh, uh, that fire destroyed. There were some other damages to two, two units, two residential units, and some light damage to um, uh, two additional residences, infrastructure damage and so on. There are multiple other damages uh, to our uh, uh, fiber systems to uh, uh, regions without power. So there's still still uh, a lot that we are going through the assessment right now. Um, uh, that, so the fire did continue on. Basically, it tried to make a whole circle around the mountain. It did go to Ralston Lake Ridge, then it continued on to the south. Um, and then it uh, later on, it uh, uh, started to attack the Kepler Peak over where the um, the residential units, the water tanks, um, there's a K telescope over there. And then it started to continue on to the, to the east of us, getting really, really intense uh, over there. And uh, you see some of the flames uh, right behind this little ridge. This is Copernicus Peak with a fire lookout, which all, is this also saved. This is another really, really a miracle. You see that fire lookout, this is where folks are looking. Volunteers are setting, uh, uh, setting up up there and looking, at, watching out for smoke, uh, smokes and fires. So they're very relieved to see also that their, their lookout station, this historic uh, station, is saved. Um, uh, this is a shot, I think, later on at night, our all sky camera showing uh, the whole glow around the observatory, with the exception of the north north uh, section here where there's. Uh, uh, the, the fires are not active yet. Um, so then the, um, um, the day after, uh, of course, as you can imagine, there were multiple, multiple spots of fires that they were still active uh, throughout the whole region. So uh, the crews then on Thursday, uh, they, they um, um, kept uh, monitoring those spots and their progression. It was still uh, a big potential for fires to, to continue on, and then there was, uh, we were not out of the woods by that day. And on, 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 as, and you remember, as those teams were, uh, the fire teams, the PAL fire teams, the strike teams, they were jumping from place to place as active fires are taking place. So they will be here for one day, then they have to move on to another incident. So the resources that they were sending us were that once the the, the, the um, um, we're out of the immediate danger, then we'll get uh, some monitoring, smaller number of resources, and then as, uh, uh, as there were more resources to, to, to be available, we get more engines. So there are times where there'll be one engine alone, just uh, keeping an eye on things uh, on the second day. And then on the third day, things were getting to calm down a little bit, and then we had that, it's called mop-up, that basically the firefighters would go around and start putting all those embers that keep going on and um, any active fires that are still lingering uh, around the and close to the facilities they start putting those out um, and uh, from since then uh, we have um, constantly uh, there is um, um, tons of traffic uh, we see every every day there are uh, a number of uh, Large aircraft uh, passes through, uh, getting to other fires. Uh, there are crews setting up uh, fire break lines further down to, to the south of us. And uh, likely today we saw uh, AT&T, some of the communication uh, utilities on site, and pg &E has been up here for a few days as well. Great, thank you. I'm just going to stop the share screening for a moment. We received a lot of questions in advance, as you guys can imagine, um, for the two of you. So thank you so much for, for being willing to address those. I think um, the one that we received the most and, and perhaps the most important one is how is the staff? Claire, can you, can you give us an update on the staff there on the mountain? Costas mentioned uh, almost 30. 
Yeah, the staff are safe, thank goodness. Uh, they evacuated based on the projections of where the fire would be. And so it was a very orderly evacuation. Everyone has found housing, some of it's temporary, some of it's uh, more long-term. Everybody wants to get back, of course. Um, but people were able to monitor the fire uh, via the, uh, both the ham cams that you can get to on the website and the security cameras that were running the whole time, uh, surveillance cameras. So we have photos in the vault, so to speak, of everything that happened for those four days. Um, we also have hourly weather information that stayed up and the firefighters made heavy use of our weather uh, information. Um, and now the, the residents cannot come back yet. I'll say a little more about when we think they might come back later. Um, but there is a crew on site at all times uh, to keep the power and the water going. We're running on emergency generator now. And um, so the firefighters can have water to use and we can start assessing the damage that was done by the fire. And we've been meeting um, a couple times a week by Zoom with all the residents that evacuated. And uh, those meetings have been very good, just having people be able to check up on each other and find out how they're doing and can I help out somehow. It, it's made a big difference, I think. Costas, anything to add there? It was so. Uh... It was a very nice, a very safe uh, uh, evacuation. We're very, very happy to see everybody uh, safe on their places. Unfortunately, uh, scattered around different places, but uh, that's that's the most important thing out of this is that everybody's safe. Absolutely, um, I think that everyone sighed a, a breathed a sigh of relief um, that next morning when we could still see the dome standing. Um, in those ham camps. Um, Kostas, as the person who was there for, for most of that time, can you tell us exactly who saved the like, observatory? So, right, uh, this is uh, 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 literally the group effort from uh, multiple units. Uh, the, the leadership from CAL FIRE. Uh, CAL FIRE is the agency that does uh, deal with uh, wildfires. And uh, in this particular case, we had uh, the unit from the Santa Clara unit. Uh, uh, so they were um, um, they, they were handling this incident in coordination with uh, um, with the strike teams from multiple uh, uh, units throughout the uh, the whole state. So there were there were units from engines from uh, San Luis Obispo, from Palo Alto. Uh, and those are all of the governor's uh, office of emergency services. Uh, resources uh, from Bakersfield uh, to Larry County, uh, Montclair uh, group, uh, San Jose Fire. There were, there were so many resources that uh, um, they were utilized to, to really do this, uh, this amazing uh, miracle. Uh, this is a miracle that uh, those folks, uh, they, they, with the heroic events, the, the heroic efforts, they were able to to, to, to keep the, the, the structures uh, still standing. The timing, their timing was absolutely, or the coordination, uh, absolutely uh, uh, critical to, to all of this. Uh, the, 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 the firefighters, uh, as I mentioned earlier in my uh, presentation, they did uh, 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 use the main building as the safety zone. So basically they have to be there for their safety. They have to have established a safety zone. And um, so they were there all, all the time. They, they occupied the, uh, and defended the, the main building uh, really all the time. It was, it was, I was quite relieved to see so many, so many 60 or so firefighters and 16 engines and uh, multiple other vehicles defending right there at the main building, at the parking lot, uh, really you know, defending that. If, if, if anything else, at least that. That top, that uh, the main building will be, it was in good hands. Hostess, you had a video of some of that firefighting happening. Did you want to show that now? Sure, let me try 
Why is that bigger than right there? Maybe. So this is uh, one of the strike teams um, um, entering the um, uh, Rattlesnake Ridge. This is the ridge to the south of us near the Crosley Telescope. So this is right below, right below the Crosley Telescope. If you put on the sound, you can hear it. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Can you hear the sound? No. Okay. okay. So as we're seeing these dramatic images and everything is charred, the firefighters, they look so calm. They, they are in control of the situation. That is, that is what is important about all of this. This, this particular, this particular house um, was one of them that they were on a very high risk and um, they, they were really, they were, the chances for it surviving was really grim. And um, within uh, 10 minutes of their entry, they, the, the good news came back and it was, it was a huge save. They, 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 they're, they're, they're amazing crews, that's all I have to say. They, they just, no, no words. In these first few days uh, following the fire, Claire, uh, what is the initial assessment of, of damage? Well, the first thing is amazing that the observatory survived, considering what could have happened. You saw the flames licking around everything, and uh, the firefighters did a fantastic job. Um, as you can see in the background here, the telescopes and the domes seem to be okay. We haven't been able to do much uh, investigating what happened inside, but they don't seem to have been directly um, hit by the fire. Uh, we haven't been able to go inside to evaluate the optics and how much soot we have to clean off and um, is, what's, what's the junk mired in the gears and all of that. So that'll, it'll have to be a lot of cleaning work to do, very careful work so as not to damage the optics. But I think basically they're okay, which is shocking. Um, and as Costa said, a few of the residences had mild damage. We think it's repairable, thanks to the efforts of these wonderful firefighters. Um, and then the PG&E power poles burned down, so we have no PG&E power. Uh, we're running on our own emergency generator, which seems to be okay, but it's not a long-term solution. Um, because we have power in the generator, we're able to pump our water as usual. So the water, water tank is pretty full. And um, the rest of the utilities, uh, I forget what happened to the uh, Wi-Fi and, and the internet. Do you know, uh, Costas? Uh, portions of the mountain are without internet. So, um, in fact, we're we have set up uh, our, um, it's very spotty in multiple connect, in multiple areas, so we keep finding spots that uh, uh -huh. we, lost, we lost the fiber, the fiber in one region, and uh, even uh, even underground, the wiring, uh, communications wiring is, has been damaged uh, in some some places, and uh, we're, we're setting up currently uh, just backup uh, ways, uh, backup means of uh, setting up temporary um, uh, communications for 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 initially for our, our our initial assessment operations. The radios work the whole time. The the whole team on the mountain has uh, two way radios, or maybe it's multi way radios, and they were working the whole time, which is very very important. And another uh, good uh, good point about the radios: uh, we were uh, in constant communications uh, the days. Uh, uh, before the fire with, uh, with CAL FIRE. Uh, we have a repeater, radio repeater in Mount Hamilton. Uh, so uh, all the agencies within Mount Hamilton, uh, the Mahalan region, including CAL FIRE, the station uh, Smith Creek, which is seven miles from here, 
the Santa Clara County Parks, the Grand Park, and also the Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, uh, or the reserve just north of, uh, of uh, Grand Park. They were all uh, utilizing our repeater and we're exchanging the information, the communication, how the, the fire was advancing. And um, so the radios, the two-way radios, they were essential for this, for this uh, operation. We obviously have such a caring um, community here, as you can see by the number of folks who have joined us today, um, who have been asking the question, how can I help right now? How can I help on the mountain? How can I help just in general? How can I be part of this rebuilding effort? Hostess, you want to start? Yes, sure. The, so, uh, um, uh, yes, please understand that uh, I don't know how many people might have seen, probably a lot of people might have seen, the, the mountain, the whole region has changed, has changed a lot. Um, so it is, uh, for the time being, as, as, as recovery process, uh, and uh, uh, we would encourage people to, to, to stay away for, for, for a while until, to, to, to help with this recovery process, to help with, the, uh, with all the crews uh, uh, trying to maintain uh, and get the operations back up and running uh, 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 until all those hazards uh, 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 you know, are minimized. Uh, so we'll encourage folks to stay, stay away from a little bit from Mount Hamilton. Um, I, I don't have any, perhaps Claire, I'm not sure what the planning is for operations as far as uh, telescope operations. And uh, um, it sounds like perhaps uh, the, the, uh, the observatory will not be open even uh, when the roads will be open. So we remain in close for a little while. We have to have reliable power in order for the telescopes to track. We have to be sure that, as I said before, there isn't ash in the gears and uh, chem bad chemicals on the, on the mirrors and so forth. So it'll take a while. Same question to you, Claire. How can folks um, that are asking help now? Yeah, a lot of you are still, set, you know, people have asked, what can we give you? And frankly, we're not, uh, we haven't done enough damage assessment to know exactly what we need. Um, so I've been telling people if they if they're interested in giving us something to help out, they could just give to the UCO director's discretionary fund, which is me. And I will assure you that when we understand what needs to be replaced and fixed and what the big ticket items are, um, we will use those funds to get up on our feet again and let you know what we're doing with it. And, uh, but right now we can't point to any one object and say, we need another one of these, please. Yes. So I, I hope you'll help us out uh, and realize that we're not in a late enough stage yet to be able to be too definitive about exactly what we need. Thank you, Claire. Um, you know, we were talking earlier today and, and none of us could remember, I'm sure that there, there might be some historians in this group um, who could tell us in, in the chat. I've seen, I've seen Tony here, for example. Um, none of us remembered when a fire this large threatened the observatory, um, but we certainly have always known that it was a potential threat. Um, there's a lot of questions in the chat right now and, and that we received in advance. Um, Costas, can you speak a little bit to what we did to protect the staff and observatory before this fire? And in particular, some folks were asking about FEMA grants to support the thinning recommendations. Um, did that happen? I know the answer is yes, so I'm going to ask in advance. Did it work? Um, did the subsequent upkeep actually mitigate this fire's destructive powers? Right. The uh, there was uh, vegetation management, yes, there was a vegetation management through a FEMA grant in, uh, I think it took place in 2008, and uh, there was a requirement at the time that uh, to commit to maintain the vegetation management uh, um, every 10 years, or at least every 10 years, which uh, we did uh, in 2016, initiated in 2016, and uh, then in 2017. Uh, we had uh, the uh, vegetation management again. This is this is 
of vegetation management is to, to clear your vegetational run uh, uh, at minimum around uh, buildings uh, and structures uh, uh, in a radius uh, up to 100 feet. And uh, this, this last time, uh, actually, we, uh, there was some additional vegetation that was required to, uh, to be removed, it's like gray pine and a lot of bushes, a lot of small scrub and like uh, rosemary and things like that, juniper. And um, um, so that played a huge role in, in really uh, slowing down the fire and, and allowing the firefighters to, to get there in timely, fast to, to save the structures. Additionally, with the small crew that we have at Mount Hamilton, or Mount, Mount Hamilton, uh, the, the, the main our maintenance crew, uh, we were keeping up with uh, uh, the clearing around the buildings, around the, the, the tanks, the residences, uh, with trimming, we were required by Cal Fire to, uh, uh, to, to keep the fanciful space on all the residences. So a small crew, uh, but really strong crew, is, is, has done an amazing job keeping those, uh, those uh, that vegetation or the digital vegetation that could get its way into the buildings uh, in, in, in a good control. Anything to add, Claire? Yeah, I think um, what we've realized more deeply this time watching the fire is that there are some very steep areas where the fire could climb very fast. And so we're discussing extending the distance of the dis defensible space beyond 100 feet on the really steep parts. And um, we'll, we'll, we're gonna try and do that. It costs money, all of this vegetation management costs considerable amounts of money. But as you can see, I think it's well worth it. Did the fire um, fighters mention anything about the vegetation clearing costus? Did they think it made a difference? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the the fire did uh, um, the vegetation management did uh, make their work easier in terms of allowing them, giving them the time to to um, to attack and protect the structures. But again, there are uh, the recommendation is again if you can extend this uh, uh, to to uh, to a larger radius, it's going to uh, to give you a much better chances in protecting this in the future. Our, our former colleague, Don Gavel, um, who used to run our lab for adaptive optics, um, he's, he's obviously really grateful that all of the people are okay um, and, and understands that we might have unknown damage at the time, as, as you all have mentioned, but is wondering, do we have any kind of rough estimate um, on when science operations might be able to start again? Well, the short answer is not yet, but soon. Uh, they're gonna, there's going to be a lot of uh, professional damage assessment from the people in UCSC's Office of Emergency Services um, the, in the next couple of weeks. And they're, they're going to come up and you know, do a scientific damage assessment. And we're, we'll be looking much more carefully at the, inside the telescope domes to, to be sure that there aren't uh, things that were damaged indirectly inside, even if the outside is okay. We need our power back from PG&E. And uh, they have actually sent crews up there to look at their burned power poles and uh, be sure that the wires that went down aren't live and so forth. So they're busy, but the whole area in back of the observatory also lost power, possibly even worse than us. So. Uh, you know, they know we're here, they're looking carefully at what they need to do, but we don't have a plan for when they're going to actually do it. And we need AT to, at and to come back for communications. Um, so, you know, I think what will happen is there'll be a couple telescopes, which once the power comes back, maybe even before the full power comes back, there'll be a couple telescopes which are relatively easy to handle and maybe can be done entirely remotely or they're, they'll turn on first and then we'll gradually turn on the rest as the damage gets repaired. Thank you. A few um, follow-up questions. Uh, can you maybe speak to, you know, why isn't the power underground? Um, and are there areas where we're nervous about mudslides afterwards because of the damage? Uh, sure, I can answer that. So the, uh, so the 
for the facility, for the Lake Observe facility, all the power is underground. Uh, however, the, the, the rest of the uh, uh, utility, PGMA's uh, power lines were on poles, and uh, there's a big destruction there. Um, so in our region, there, was, um, um, there were sections of the conduit, the power line conduit, which was uh, slightly exposed. And that's, uh, that's the region where we have uh, um, some damage because of the heat. What was the rest of that question? I forgot. Is Natasha there? Natasha, I think you're uh, muted. Unmute, sorry. Yeah. Um, mudslides. Mudslides, okay. Are we concerned about mudslides, especially once we get to winter storm season? Absolutely, yes. That's, that's going to be a big concern as well. We're also getting some questions about specific. Can I, can I, can I say something about mudslides? Of course. Um, as you may have seen in that video where the firefighters were defending the house, there are uh, thin scrubby trees whose um, trunks burn, but whose foliage on top, a lot of it is okay. And so they're, they still have roots there. It's not like all the, everything alive was burned out of the hillsides. So at least in some parts of the terrain, uh, I think there's enough of those little trees to hold the ground. We'll see. There are patches that they're still, they're still green. Yes, that's, that's a good sign. Um, we do have a couple of questions about specific structures, um, in particular the SETI cams. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what those are and if we know whether or not um, they were damaged? Costas, do you want to do that or should I? Uh, go, go ahead. Okay. So the SETI Institute is uh, in um, uh -oh, Mountain View, is that right? And th they have uh, uh, set up in a trailer, a substantial trailer, on our site where they, they are taking wide uh -huh. pictures of the sky so as to be able to trace the paths that meteorites make when they go through the sky. And if you can trace the path from the beginning to end, you can reason backwards and calculate the orbit that the meteor, the parent meteor was on, you know, before it made the mistake of hitting us. And uh, that's important for solar system science to figure out where these small bodies um, in the solar system are, are living and where the meteorites uh, originate and the meteors originate. Uh, so we, don't, we haven't been inside the trailer. It's possible that things had some heat damage there, but um, the outside looks okay. And utility to that is uh, also has been damaged, uh, the power. Yeah. Yep. So we have to bring that back in anyway, so. Um, so much of this is unknown because you haven't been able to get in to do assessment on the individual structures. Um, but what comes next? Ah, um, well, the next few weeks are going to be full of damage inspections and damage assessment and uh, the process of getting bids for how to fix things. Um, PG&E, we hope, will be bringing back the power sometime in the next few weeks. I hope sooner rather than later. Um, the water supply, we're going to have to do a lot of testing to be sure it's safe and healthy. Um, I don't think that'll take very long. Caltrans has to uh, decide that State Route 130, which goes through the observatory, is safe to drive. And on the front side, which is called the Mount Hamilton Road, it looks pretty good to us, but we don't know. We can't see what's happened in the retaining walls and railings and stuff like that. So they have to inspect that for safety. Um, We'll continue to check in with our staff several times a week to update. And uh, there are things that they can do from not uh, not from home, but from from wherever they're at. Um, because, for example, the night crew can uh, monitor the generator at night to be sure that it's doing OK, the emergency generator, things like that. Um, and then when the 
people start feeling safe about working more on the summit before they come back to live there, they'll be working with our scientists to check out the telescopes and the instruments and the optics and uh, figure out the fastest way to get back to uh, full science operations. So there's lots to do. Yes. The big question is how long will it take? And I don't know. Thank you. Um, we are obviously not the only ones who are in the path of those fires on the mountain. Um, uh, a lot of folks would like to know what about the back country east of Mount Hamilton? Costas, can you share a little bit about that? Sure. The, um, the fires uh, east of us, uh, east of the uh, east of the Lick Observatory, where uh, the destruction there was much more extreme, uh, the, both in uh, a lot of people lost their homes back in uh, I don't have a good number, but I heard that there's uh, many, many folks have lost their homes. Um, the, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, power lines down, trees down on San Antonio Valley Road. The damage is all the way from Mount Hamilton to Patterson and to Livermore. It extends all the way up uh, as far as the utilities, the grid. So it, as you can imagine, it, it, it is uh, the distraction on that backside. We really hope that uh, the, those evacuations uh, can be lifted soon so folks can, can go back to their homes. Um, we have a follow-up question about UC, about UC and insurance. Um, Claire, do you have any current understanding of, of how and if that will work and, and, and what questions we still need to address moving forward? Well, so UC is self-insured, uh, which I used to think was pretty meaningless because they would just pay the, the insurance money out of current uh, expense accounts. But it turns out they actually have actuaries who calculate how much money they're going to have to put aside someplace in some kind of account to reimburse for, uh, in, a, in the way that a genuine insurance company would. And uh, I know that in astronomy, they have done that. The, um, there was a radio telescope up at Hack Creek Observatory, which just fell down. It just went plop one night. And uh, the uh, self-insured aspect of UC enabled them to build a, a better and different telescope there to replace it. So, I think if, if we at Mount Hamilton are the only people who really lost out tremendously in these big fires, I'm pretty confident that the insurance scheme will work. If the UC Santa Cruz campus burns, then I, I have no idea what will happen. Because to have to rebuild the whole campus is billions of dollars. We're petty change by contrast. But so far, the fire lines up there seem to be holding. Well, uh, I don't know that you have the answer to this, Costas, um, based on, on your previous comments, but um, people specifically asked if you have any news about Blue Oak Ranch or Isabel Ranch. So the Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, uh, they, um, uh, the staff evacuated in time. I uh, received information that uh, their, their uh, buildings are, they did not sustain any damage. Half, however, half of the reservation uh, did the fire swept through. Uh, I believe this is a similar uh, reservation as the observatory, about 3,600 acres within that range. Um, Thank you. Claire, can you put up um, the image of um, the, our webcam today? Can you put okay. up our current? I know that you've got that running in the background. Okay, I gotta retrieve it here. Talk about something else in the meantime. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be putting in um, links, uh, information about how you can receive this video afterwards if you want to watch again or if you want to share it with any of your friends. Um, I'm also going to um, put my email address so that you can continue to send questions, um, which we will try to answer in um, FAQs and future emails and social media posts um, to all of you. Um, in, in just a few moments as we 
we close out this event. So this is what it looked like a minute ago. That's fantastic, Claire. It's totally shocking. With the, those 80 foot flames and everything, how did this happen? Is the observatory still there? Well, the smoke is obviously cleared here. Um, Claire, are there any final comments that you want to make before we close this event? Yeah, I, I, uh, I want to echo the thanks that we all feel toward Costas, who was up there a lot of the time, the majority of the time. And you say, well, we've got all these skilled firefighters up there. What's a, what's a superintendent going to do? that they can't do. But it turned out he was extremely crucial because he knows the terrain, he knows the roads. They wanted to know, is it safe to back up into uh, somebody's driveway in order to save their house? And he said, yes, it's safe. But if he hadn't been there, they probably wouldn't have backed up into the driveway and saved the house. And he knew where the fire trails were, he knew about the water supply, just everything. And so, um, Paul, if you're on, I'm gonna quote you. Uh, we have a support astronomer who's Irish, and his comment, which I initially didn't even understand, uh, was that um, if we could do knighthoods in the US, uh, Costa should be an, an ordained a knight, or whatever the right verb is, for having saved the observatory. I, I just so grateful, Costas. Thank you. Bravo. Absolutely, bravo. I just want to take time again to say thank you all um, for joining us here, um, and especially to Claire and for Costas um, for joining us and for, for answering the questions that you sent to us in advance um, during what I know is an incredibly busy time uh, for you both. If you would like to support Claire and Costas's effort, you can make a gift directly um, at the connect.ucsc.edu backslash UCO director fund that I just put in the chat. Um, or of course you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you directly or answer any additional questions. Marianne and I will continue to share updates by email um, and on the Lick Observatory and UC Observatory social media channels. That's also where we will post videos um, and, and in addition to sending out the video um, by email. But thank you again, everyone. Please stay safe and good night.